Greetings, everyone, and welcome to another holiday update. Yes, this time, of course, being Comic Book Wednesday. I've got a stack of comic books and trade paperbacks and collected editions and uh, some superhero movies on Blu-ray. So, got a lot of stuff to go through. Let's get right to it. Comic Book Wednesday holiday update today on the Multimedia Chronicles. Welcome back. Alrighty, so as you know, over the past, I don't know, year, well, actually almost two years, wow, has it been that long already? Um, I've been really enjoying the various uh, reboots and reimaginings of the classic Hanna-Barbera characters that uh, DC Comics has been doing. So as I uh, uh, said uh, at the time, I, I was really uh, quite struck by how good the Flintstones one was. So when I heard they were doing this one, I was pretty excited. Yes, that's right. Meet George Jetson and his family <laughs> from the fantastic year, whatever it's set in. I can only remember. But uh, we have the Jetsons. Yeah, getting the, uh, the updated treatment as well. Um, now, this one's actually a six-issue limited series. So they seem to be going the limited series route with uh, more of them now, I think, because uh, the initial batch was kind of uh, a mixed bag as far as how well it was received. Um or how well they sold, I guess. But uh, but yeah, so they're being very clear now as to which ones are uh, limited series or mini series and which ones are ongoing series. So we have the Jetsons, number one. And number two. And number three. So there you go. Yeah, um, as usual, it's been a few months since I managed to get to the comic store, so I've fallen woefully behind in a lot of things and missed some things, alas. There's a new Gem series out, uh, Gem Dimensions. It's already on the second issue. I can't find the first issue anywhere. <sighs> Getting really annoyed with myself for slacking on the Gem, you know? Speaking of another one I missed uh, an issue of, we have issue four of Future Quest Presents. This one features the Galaxy Trio and, of course, more Space Ghost. Um, I missed issue number three. <laughs> it's almost getting to the point I th I'm thinking, like, well, should I even bother with individual comic book collecting anymore? Should I maybe just wait for the trades and get those? Because I, I seem to miss a lot of stuff because I can't always get to the comic book store. I just don't have money for it that month or whatever. Anyway, so then uh, one of the newer reboots, this is another six-issue limited series, we have the Rough and Ready Show. Yeah, so this is great. This is basically, uh, kind of takes place in modern days, Rough and Ready are has-been celebrities just trying to make their way in the world, and it's uh, the story of them just trying to be relevant in today's world. And it is um, written, where is it here? Oh, they actually have it at the end. Hold on a second. It is written by Howard Chaikin. Like, comic book legend Howard Chaikin is writing the Rough and Ready show, which is freaking awesome. He's not doing the artwork, alas, which is unfortunate because I, I love when he writes and draws his own stuff. Um, yeah, great, very, very talented uh, comic book legend there so it's great to see him taking on something like this i mean just it, you know and from what I, I haven't sat down and read them all yet but i just kind of flipped through to see you know what the gist of it was and i really like what i've seen of it it looks like uh you know very kind of uh down to earth as it, it kind of treats them as if they were just real celebrities from back in the day and how they're trying to be relevant today and uh and it's great stuff and here we see them at a comic book convention or, you know, some kind of convention, desperately trying to get people to get, buy autographs from them. And, uh, yeah, so great stuff. And then finally we have issue number three. So this is also a six-issue miniseries, so uh, we are halfway. Uh, so, yeah, so check that one out if you get a chance. And then, uh, let's see, I think last time I had missed an issue of this, specifically this one. We have issue number 17 of Scooby Apocalypse, because I had bought, uh, what was it, I had bought issue... 18 and uh missed 17 so then uh we have issue 19 of scooby apocalypse 
I don't know where we're going. We're going all over the place. And then I bought issue 19 again. <sighs> yeah, I'm. <laughs> How many times have I done that now? Or I just uh, end up going and rebuying. I don't think I have this one. That, that's the problem when you collect so many and you collect them sporadically. Um, th this almost inevitable, inevitably happens unless you have the foresight and planning to make a list before you go. It's like, okay, I have up to this issue. I need to get from here on. And I have done that on occasion and left the list at home like an idiot. But uh, anyway, this is kind of interesting. They have uh, slightly changed the design of the, uh, the numbering now. So it used to be we had the DC logo and just the number in a circle. So now we've got it almost more Marvel, old school Marvel style, where we have it in a just a box on the corner there, all the information. So that's kind of cool. And that seems to be the norm from now on. So that's issue 20 and then issue 21. Scooby Apocalypse, definitely the most successful of the uh, um, rebirths of the Hanna Barbera characters. And this is also featuring backup stories with Secret Squirrel. So if you're a Secret Squirrel fan, I want to check these out. I think that started with issue 18 was when they started doing the Secret Squirrel backup stories. So check that out. And then we have... Issue 25 of Invader Zim. Pretty sure a couple more have come out since then. So, yeah, I have yet to miss an issue of Zim. So, good stuff. Let's see here. And then we've got a few... Uh, yeah, speaking of missing issues, we had these uh, one-shots here for the, uh, the First Strike crossover event. So, all, all the major Hasbro titles got their own one-shots that tied directly in with that. So, we have the G.I. Joe one... And we have the ROM one. And there was ones for, there was a couple of Transformers ones. And there was, I don't even know how many there were, to be honest. I didn't, uh, uh, I didn't pay a lot of attention. <laughs> and uh, ended up missing a bunch of them. So that's the only two I got. And I think First Strike is over now. Um... Yeah, and you know, honestly, with, with this Hasbro combined universe thing, I'm thinking that trades is the way to go because, uh, well, as you saw with the Revolution one, there were so many crossovers and tie-ins and stuff that it's just impossible sometimes to get them all. Um, and they they don't seem to be, uh, the comic store doesn't seem to be carrying as many of the subsequent crossovers, like as many copies of the issues, so it's, it's harder to get them. Um, yeah, so I might... Uh, might start being a little more selective with these and just kind of go with uh, the uh, the individual or the uh, cross or the uh, blah, the trades. And then we got Rom versus Transformers number four. There's one more issue of this which I thought I had, but apparently I did do not. It's funny I didn't buy it thinking that I would be buying a duplicate. Yet I bought another copy of issue 19 of Scooby Apocalypse. Go figure. And then we have Rom number 14. And I bought this a while ago, and there has not been another issue since. I'm wondering if this is done now, and if they're uh, going the route that they went with. Uh... Oh, yeah, it is. This is the last issue. It says right there, the end, and then it continues in ROM and Micronauts. So they've actually taken ROM and the Micronauts and combined them into their own comic. So now they are separate no longer. It doesn't say it's a miniseries, so maybe this is this is where it's going. So we have issue number one of ROM Micronauts. It doesn't say ROM and or ROM versus, it's just ROM Micronauts. So there you go. So that's where it's gone. So now they have both combined into a single title, which, um, you know, which is different. I mean, it's the first time that these two have ever directly crossed over, like just the two of them. Um but I think it's it, it fits having the two of them kind of together like that. I mean, the two ran concurrently for a long time back in the Marvel days. They were both uh, written by Bill Mantlo, so they're very much his babies. And uh, so it's kind of cool to see them together. And then I knew that this franchise was coming back. I've been waiting for it. Um, I'm a little confused but because I... Um, uh, as I say, I haven't been to the comic shop in a couple months, so I'm a little behind uh, the ball as far as, you know, keeping up to date on everything. Um, I don't know if this is the first appearance of them or if, if it's a reference to something that happened in First Strike. I haven't read all of them yet, so... Um, but anyway, we have Transformers versus Visionaries. Yes, the Visionaries. Knights of the Magical Light 
or at long last back. Um, definitely one of my favorite cartoons of the 80s, and it has quite a loyal, if small, and dedicated uh, fan following. <laughs> um, I have the UK DVD release, I have all the original Marvel comics, and uh, I just love it. It's great stuff. So it's great to see Visionaries finally coming back. Um, so this is Transformers vs. Visionaries number one. Now the reason I'm confused is because it starts with a previously, which usually indicates previous issues. Um, and uh, there's nothing in here about a Visionaries number one or something. Is there maybe a... Sometimes they have a checklist. Comics coming out this month. Uh, no. <laughs> There's nothing. So, I don't know if I missed a Visionaries number one or if they're referring to events featuring the Visionaries that happened in First Strike. Um, I don't know, because the previously only featured Visionaries characters. So, I don't know. Uh, then we've got the last gem issue I picked up. Uh, gem and the Misfits uh, number three which is the final part of the Infinite storyline. So the one I missed was the one prior to this, which was Gem and the Holograms, number three, uh, which was part five of the Infinite storyline. So for the first time since it started, I missed an issue of Gem. And now, uh, since they started the Dimensions miniseries event, um, I missed the first issue of that. So like two, two issues in very close uh, proximity I have missed. It's very annoying. All right, and then uh, just to give you an idea of how long it's been since I did a comic book update, uh, around Halloween, <laughs> they had a free comic book day, uh, just kind of for Halloween, and had a bunch of uh, like sort of horror-related comics. So Rosie and I went, and uh, this is one of the ones I got. We got uh, free comic book day Ghostbusters comic, very cool. Uh, actually, they call it Halloween Comic Fest, but it's, it was basically another free comic book day. Just go in and... Grab some free comics. And then uh, this one I picked up just because it looked really cool. I'd never uh, heard of it before. But uh, we have Lady Mechanica, which is very cool. Kind of a steampunk horror comic. Very neat. Very uh, nifty. And then uh, also got Sabrina, the Teenage Witch. Uh, the Chilling Adventures of Sabrina, Season 2. I gotta say, I really like a lot of the reimagined uh, Archie stuff that they've been doing recently, like uh, sort of darker, more serious stories. They got the zombie storylines and uh, more kind of horror stuff, and and very wisely, I think, brought Sabrina into that reimagined, uh, you know, Archie horror comics world. Um, yeah, I would love to collect them, but you know, budget. <laughs> I have to be picky and choosy. But uh, I do watch Riverdale. And I've really been enjoying Riverdale. All right. And then finally, the last free comic book I picked up. Again, another one that I just thought looked really interesting. Picked up Baby Teeth. And there you go. Yeah. So don't know much about these. They're basically just, hey, it's free. I'll check them out. And, I mean, that's a great thing for, uh, you know, new publishers, new comics, what have you. Just do a free comic book day. Literally give away an issue for people to check out your stuff. And then around the same time, a uh, very popular Netflix show was having its uh, return. Got this special uh, Stranger Things 2 card, like a poster card. And it's, uh, it's neat. I, I love the, uh, just the whole retroness of this. Um, yeah, Stranger Things uh, Season 1 was released on Blu-ray, but it appears uh, not in Canada uh, everybody was talking about the Target exclusive edition that uh, looked like an old VHS case and uh, even had the discs and what looked like an old VHS tape. But uh, alas, we did not get that here in Canada and I have not seen any kind of uh, like non-limited edition release either. So it's just kind of like, I, I don't know. All right, uh, next up. Oh, I left one in my room. I'll be right back. Oops, actually, I left two in my room. Ha-ha! All right. Ah, well, first up, uh, that's it for the single issues. Now on to the trades and collected editions. We have Volume 6 of Rick and Morty. Uh, you say this every time I get one of these. If you're a fan of the show, get the comics. You will absolutely love them. 
They are 100% as good as the show. Uh, you literally hear the characters' voices in your head as you're reading it. It's uh, it's terrific. And the stories are just spot on, just like the show, um, and often slotted in between the continuity of of the uh, the show itself. So, uh, very cool stuff. A lot of fun. Really enjoy these a lot. Next up, uh, you may recall a while back I picked up, uh, you know, I've been picking up some of the Marvel Epic collections. Well, there's one set in particular that, uh, you know, speaks to me and my inner rage monster. I'm, of course, talking about the Incredible Hulk. So this is volume two of the Epic collection, which covers 1964 through 1967. So a good chunk of years there. Uh, specifically, Tales to Astonish, issues 60 through 96. And not brand X number three, <laughs> and uh, you can see my bookmark there. I'm almost finished, and uh, no word on when volume three is coming out. The thing is, with the epic collections, they release them kind of out of sequence and irregularly. Um, and I don't know the uh, there, there's some of the other ones have have had more volumes, like more consecutive volumes, like I think the Avengers and the uh, Thor and uh, stuff like that. Uh, whereas the Hulk hasn't had quite as many volumes, but um, I'm hoping that Volume 3 will come out sometime soon. Because, uh, in particular, because this is this this covers the vast majority of the Tales to Astonish issues. He was in Tales to Astonish from issue, what, 59 through 101. Um, so if you're wondering how they can fit so many issues in this one book, well, it's because it was a, it was a sort of a two-in-one, where they'd have two stories featuring different uh, superheroes so there was the incredible hulk and giant man for the first year or so and then uh, submariner took over uh, giant man's spot so it was submariner and the hulk um, occasionally they would just lightly cross over but uh, the two stories were usually uh, separate from each other so uh, so basically this just features the hulk stories so being half an issue, the Hulk story is literally 10 pages, and it would be the same if they did a Submariner collection. But uh, So that's how they're able to fit so many in one issue, is because they are literally half the length of a regular comic. So, yeah, so I'm really eager for them to get to Volume 3, because Volume 3 will have the last of the Tales to Astonish issues, and then... From issue 102 onward, it became The Incredible Hulk. So the Hulk completely took over the book, and it became his solo series, which continued on for 400-some-odd issues. Um, or no, more than that, 600-some-odd issues. But it changed titles in between. Anyway, it's a long, complicated, confusing history, which we're not going to get into now. Uh, anyway, a significant uh, story arc in that long, confusing history was this one here, which uh, I actually picked up the Marvel animated movie adaptation a while back and really enjoyed. I've been wanting to read the original comic for ages. They recently brought it back into print, I guess, because of Thor Ragnarok. I'm, of course, talking about Planet Hulk. Yes, the classic story by Greg Pak. From Incredible Hulk numbers 92 through 105. This also includes material from Amazing Fantasy number 15 and Giant Size Hulk number 1, and includes the uh, complete and exhaustively detailed Planet Hulk Gladiator Guidebook, which gives you all of the information you could ever possibly want to know about Sakaar and their culture and uh, the, the backstory and everything. I mean, they could do a series about Sakaar. I mean, it's that detailed and in-depth. It's amazing how much work went into that. But uh, anyway, I've been really wanting to check out this uh, storyline for a very long time. Uh, I've heard nothing but good things about it. I loved the animated movie, so I really wanted to get the full story from the original comic, because obviously the animated movie cuts out a lot of stuff. I mean, this was this was an arc that went on for over a year. This was what was running while the rest of the Marvel Universe was dealing with the original Civil War. Um, basically, it was the Illuminati shot the Hulk into space. <laughs> um, well, actually, originally the Hulk was sent to space to deal with another... Uh, menace just prior to the Civil War, and then the Civil War broke out, and they, the Illuminati realized that, well, hey, if the Hulk takes either side in this Civil War, the other side is effed, you know, so, uh, so they decided to leave him in space, redirect his ship, and rather than have him go home, send him deeper into space. They scanned around, found an uninhabited planet for him to just rage around on, and nobody would come to any harm, but of course, 
something happens, the ship is detoured and ends up crashing on Sakaar, where the Hulk becomes a gladiator. <laughs> and it's freaking awesome. So I just started reading it and uh, already loving it. It's, it's an absolute blast. So anyway, Hulk has his adventures on Sakaar and then heads back to Earth and he is pissed. So pissed, in fact, that, uh, well, the Civil War has ended and now the Hulk has brought his own war to Earth with World War Hulk. <laughs> yeah, I figured if I got this one, I got to pick up this one too because it's a direct continuation and kind of kind of an epic epilogue to it. An epic log, if you will. So, yeah, definitely uh, getting our Hulk on here with uh, some of the you know pretty major significant storylines. Uh, really, really good stuff. And finally, last but not least, um, I wanted to pick up the hardcover editions of these when they were originally put out by IDW a few years ago, but I just kept waffling on them and waffling on them, and now they're long out of print. However... Lo and behold, they've started reprinting them as more affordable soft covers. We have Volume 1 of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the Ultimate Collection. So this is a collection of all of the original Eastman and Laird stories from the Mirage Studio days. And there you go. Now, the original comics were about 40 pages of story each uh, without ads, I believe, other than ads for other Marvel, uh, Marvel other Mirage comics. Uh, so there's not a ton of issues in here, but you can see it's quite thick because, like I said, each issue was like 40 pages long. So this has issues 1 through 7, as well as the uh, uh, Raphael uh, one-shot, which introduced Casey Jones. So very cool uh, for me, especially because uh, these early stories were the ones that I had back in the day, not the first printings of all of them. I had like the fourth printing of number 1, the second printing of number... Um, to, I don't think I had number three, actually. No, I didn't have number three. And then I had first printings onward, four, five, six, and seven. Number five was the first issue I ever read, and it was right smack dab in the middle of the Turtles in Space storyline, which introduced the Triceratons and the Utroms, and uh, also tied in with the Fugitoid one-shot. Uh, I do have the Fugitoid one-shot. Sadly, the Fugitoid one-shot is not in here. I, I really wish it had been included because I feel that it is relevant. Um, Eastman and Laird have kind of waffled on it on its relevance over the years. There was one collection that did have it, but um, yeah. Anyway, yeah. The uh, I can't lift the <laughs> the uh, stand anymore because it's too freaking heavy. All right. So finally, that is it for the comics. Finally, I can put them into the collection now. Uh, last but not least, we have some comic book related movies. Uh, now this is one that uh, I, I've been wanting to get for a while and uh, finally found the uh, the 3D edition because you know I like to get the 3D editions just because you know for completeness is sake and because one day I would love to get a 3D TV or 3D viewing experience of some kind and I'll have lots of stuff to watch when I do. Um, but anyway, I loved the movie that preceded this. And I heard nothing but good things about this one. I'm, of course, talking about Lego Batman 3D. So there you go. Uh, love, Gotta love some Lego Batman. I thought he was hilarious in the Lego movie. And, uh, and I've heard that his solo movie is great. And speaking of Marvel animated movies, this is one that uh, I'd been trying to track down for a while. Couldn't find for the longest time. Finally found it again. I think it's Sunrise Records recently uh we have iron man rise of the technovore so this actually brings my marvel animated movie collection up to date that's the last one i needed so that's pretty cool uh next up we got a dc animated movie uh this is actually re-released as a commemorative edition um i missed out on the first release there's a few of the early ones that i missed out on so i'm glad to see a lot of them getting re-releases with uh you know new covers and new extras we have justice league the new frontier and i don't know well you can see what beautiful bumpy slip cover on there and it's just the same cover underneath but uh yeah really really nice basically an origin story uh, the origin story of the Justice League. So, obviously a tie-in with the uh, the new movie, which I have not seen. I will eventually. And then finally, another Marvel one. Um, I didn't actually think that this one came with a slipcover, because everywhere I saw it, it did not have one. And then I spotted it at, uh, I think it was at Walmart, and lo and behold, it had a slipcover. I was like, oh, holy crap, it, ha it does have a slipcover. It's not that great of a slipcover, honestly, but got Spider-Man Homecoming 3D, 
and it's just the same the slip cover is just the same cover as what's underneath i don't know like you know after the doctor strange release and the beautiful packaging they did for that i thought that was like heralding a new era for packaging for the um for the marvel uh, cinematic universe movies but apparently not because <laughs> spider-man homecoming came out and, and it's comparatively dull i mean it's a nice dynamic cover and all but uh but nothing spectacular in terms of the slipcover or packaging. I mean, I basically got the slipcover because I like to have the slipcover, right? I mean, uh, for completeness sake and consistency across the collection. But, uh, um, yeah, just kind of disappointing that they, after the, the beautiful packaging of Doctor Strange, they did just such, you know, by-the-numbers packaging for uh, Spider-Man. Oh, well, what can you do? Oh, that is a lot of stuff. Now i got to find shelf space for it all. Um, so that is it for the comic book update today. Holy moly, that's a long one. I didn't realize uh, this was going to be so long. But uh, these update videos are probably going to be a little longer simply because I've got so much to update because uh, I've left it so long. I mean, this is stuff literally dating back to around Halloween and then going through uh, Black Friday and Christmas and Boxing Day. Oh, excuse me. So i uh, got a lot more to do, so we'll see you for the next one, whatever it may be. Until then, thanks for watching. Big thanks to my Patreon sponsors. Uh, be sure to join us all in the Discord chat, because we have a lot of fun over there, and uh, you don't want to miss out on that. And uh, we'll see you next time. So until then, sayonara. <laughs>